Welcome to the 146th edition of Spooky Reviews from Spooky Ventures. This time around, I'm looking at a new 4K UHD double disc release of the 2009 reboot of Friday the 13th. Okay, I have to admit that I am a Friday the 13th fanatic. Well, that might be a little strong. I don't collect a lot of memorabilia and stuff, but I do love the movies and own the box set of the original run of the films. I saw part of this movie a while back and was not impressed by it. Well, now that I've seen it from start to finish, that opinion has really changed. I think in a lot of ways they captured the spirit of the original series well, yet they brought it more up to date. The film does rely a little too heavily on jump scares, but there is plenty of dread here. They basically took the first three or four Friday the 13th movies and condensed them into one film. Well, that's not entirely true, but what they did was retell the saga of those movies in one movie, but it's also an interpretation. There are a couple of changes that I'm going to address nearer the end because they represent spoilers. Let me just say that I haven't figured out how I feel about those changes. I can see the reasoning behind them, but perhaps because of the amount of familiarity I have with the original material, something about it just sort of feels a little off to me. There are also a couple of things I spotted that seemed like they were nods to other films. Again, I'm going to hold that until the end because they could be spoilers as well. One change I can talk about here is that this version of Jason moves much quicker than the original version did. One of those allusions to other material that doesn't really qualify as a spoiler is that the whole grittiness of the film, along with a lot of the settings, gave me a bit of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre feeling. I can't place any direct visual cues or moments for that one, but it's just more of a general aesthetic. Now, I'm, as to the pacing of Jason, I'm not sure how I feel about that either. On the one hand, it makes more sense. I mean, his somewhat slower pace forced the cliché of having a victim fall while running a lot of the time. It also made it seem unlikely that he actually could have caught up to them unless they did fall. On the other hand, there's a certain sense of dread associated with a killer who doesn't run, but also never stops his pursuit until he catches you. It always seemed to me to be a metaphor for the inevitability of death. I'm not sure if they, uh, the movie makers ever really intended that when making the movies, but at least it was a happy or maybe not so happy accident. Just like the death he brings with him, Jason stalks you, always a little behind until eventually he catches you. This new version of Jason isn't as patient. In terms of things they definitely got right here, they have a cast of characters that seem to fit pretty well with the type of victims that were presented in the original series. There is also some very funny dialogue, and I'm talking intentionally funny, not the kind of accidentally funny stuff. I found myself literally laughing out loud at some of the stuff the characters said. The sex, nudity, and debauchery of the original series are all intact, too. But those are essentials of the series, so it wouldn't have been Friday the 13th without them. I like how they seem to take some of the most memorable kills in the series and rethink them, presenting them in fresh ways. One example in the extended introductory portion of the film involves a woman being killed in a sleeping bag. Jason doesn't slam her against a tree like one of the most famous kills in the original series, though. I won't give you any more information because I don't want to be a spoiler, but that's just sort of an example of how they preserve the legend while also making it fresh and new. While this is packed full of blood, gore, and imaginative kills, it does still drag a little early on after the opening parts. Still, there's enough rapid-fire death and destruction throughout the rest of the film to make it bearable. Before we get to the spoiler stuff, I want to talk about the bonus features. First, we get two cuts of the film here. There is the original theatrical release version on Disc 1. Disc 2 has an extended killer cut that runs about 8 or 9 minutes longer. In addition to more gore, sex, and nudity, that cut has some footage, some of which improves the film and some that does the opposite. There is a failed escape sequence that is somewhat pointless. 
One of the minor characters' deaths is different, though, and that change both gives a better explanation of how Jason gets his trademark hockey mask and explains why the corpse is later found beheaded. There are interviews and audio commentary options. While the interviews are all on the first disc, both have audio commentary. There is a short featurette that talks about the idea of remakes in general and why they are not the travesty that a lot of people make them out to be. It does fanboy a little bit too much about this movie, and I don't agree completely with some of the things said in that gushing portion of it, but I found it to be entertaining and worthwhile. Those are just a few of the bonuses. This thing is really packed with them. So I'm going to wrap this part up, but if you don't mind spoilers, stick around because I'm going to get to some after I give people a chance to shut this video off to avoid them. Let me say that I was hesitant about this one because of my loyalty to the source material. Let's face it though, a lot of the original series of films didn't make sense in terms of continuity. This fixes some of that. There were also some pretty cheesy things first time around too. I think they do make an effort to resolve that here as well. This doesn't replace those original films, it's not intended to. I look at this as an alternate universe take on Jason Voorhees. As such, it works really well. It captures a lot of what we all love about those movies and somehow manages to intensify it. I heartily recommend this for those with an open mind. Now, I'm about to get into some spoilers. So if you want to avoid that, this is the time to turn off the video. I'm just going to keep talking for a few moments while you shut things off. So if you're still with me now, I'm going to assume that you are very much okay with spoilers. So here we go with the spoilers. First, one big change here is that Jason has built some kind of underground tunnel system under the camp. On the one hand, this allows him to move easily from one area to the other. That does help to explain how he can seemingly show up anywhere without warning. I'm just not sure how well it really fits the character. It also tends to make it feel a little less unique. I mean, that's the kind of thing any number of generic serial killer characters in other franchises might do. And then there is an issue of a prisoner. He keeps one girl chained up in the underground lair. He does it because she bears a resemblance to his mother. Now that part sort of makes sense. There were instances in the original run of films where Jason was confused by someone who resembled his mother. I'm just not sure why he would keep someone he thinks of as his mother chained up. And again, it just makes his character seem a little more generic to me. Now I mentioned that there are some nods to other horror films. At one point, Jason impales a victim on a set of antlers on the wall. That definitely made me think of Silent Night, Deadly Night, and I have to believe it was intentional. There is another that is much subtler, and I'm not sure if it was intended. At one point, a truck pulls over and a hand comes out of the window to motion for someone to come forward. It reminded me a lot of the scene in Duel where the truck driver motions our hero to go around. Now the framing of the scene and the motion seemed very reminiscent of it, so I do tend to think that it was probably intentional, but I really can't say for sure. Now with those spoiler things out of the way, that wraps up this review, um, because I pretty much covered everything else before. Spooky Ventures is the home for spooky content and spooky merchandise on the web. Check it out today at SpookyVentures.com. And remember, always keep it spooky.